probiotics are live microorganisms that when administered in adequate amounts confer a health benefit on the host. There are three important points to take away from this definition. The first is that the microorganisms have to be alive. There are many different foods around the world, predominantly fermented foods that do contain live microorganisms. For example, kimchi, kombucha, sauerkraut, miso, dosa, cortito, and many others. The most famous fermented food being yogurt. There are often quite substantial numbers of microorganisms in many of these foods, and in some cases, they'd be deemed adequate amounts. I will point out that the concentration of microorganisms in many commercial probiotic capsules is extremely high. And you can see on the labels that often there are many billions of colony forming units in each capsule. Now, the widespread use of fermented foods and beverages is a reason why many people rave about taking their own natural probiotic, but yogurt and other fermented foods are not technically probiotics. They're considered functional foods. The third important point for probiotics is they have to confer a health benefit on the host. This means that we should see evidence of health benefits for humans in controlled clinical studies. A lot of fermented foods therefore miss out on being classed as a probiotic, but there are a small proportion which have been studied and shown to have a probiotic effect. Probiotics can come in many different formulations. The most common delivery route is orally for the use of tablets or capsules. They can be added to yogurt, fermented milk, and even cheese. Some forms of probiotics that are freeze-dried can be packaged without the need for refrigeration. Probiotics can be made as a gel for vaginal use or as a cream to be applied on the skin. A question I get asked a lot is, what probiotics should I use? A very understandable question given the sheer range of probiotics out there. It's actually a good question to ask, but rather difficult to give an answer. The reason for this is that many clinical trials differ in their study design. There are differences between the strains used, especially if they are commercial proprietary strains. There are also drastic differences between the duration and dosage of probiotic use. And it comes back to the specific clinical situation. The best thing to do is to find the appropriate research data on probiotic use for a particular condition. Then, based upon the relevant clinical studies, we can suggest a particular probiotic strain or strains that may be a benefit. I will caution that a probiotic may not be helpful for a particular condition, and it should in no way be replacing standard medical treatment. Probiotics are an exciting new area, and we'll surely see more developments to come in this field. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've got any questions or comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.